Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Hope everyone's having a uh, wonderful Friday night. Made it to the weekend out here. Congratulations. Hopefully everyone's got a good, safe weekend planned here. Three-day weekend for uh, some folks out there. It is 9.18 p.m. That's California time here along the West Coast. August 29th, 2025 is the date here. Latest activity shows a 1.7 earthquake across the Texas area. Out in the oil fields. A little bit of newer movement popping up here in Russia once again. Right around where that 8.8 .8 struck with a number of five-pointers today. In fact, we've had, uh, let's see how many we've got up here. I see three within this area of the region that the 8.8 .8 struck here, which is along this segment of the Curl Cam Chatka Trench. But noticing, man, a lot of uh, fives just in general across this area. Even a couple down across the Japan Trench in the five range this morning. So quite active. The latest deepest quake, though, is right there. Uh, you know, that's a pretty deep earthquake. Uh, 4.3, 242 miles deep. Um, waiting for this area to fill in. Watching it closely. Uh, it's kind of been skipping over the surface areas here where the locked region sits along the Crow Cam Chatka. This is a major subduction zone uh, along this area. Been, you know, of course, a lot of earthquake activity up here. Now starting to stir up down here and... Uh, Deeper activity within the zone where we should see some further stress and strain building up. Uh, I pulled up the historical data here in this area. And uh, there's the 8.8 .8 up here across the Crow Camp Chatka. That uh, partially released the strain out here along that subduction zone. Uh, there's that deeper earthquake, 600 kilometers deep for an 8.3 back in 2013. That had to have built up a lot of strain out here. Uh, but it was just, you know, some odd years later to 2025, we get the 8.8. .8. Uh, the 2011 earthquake of a 9.1 there in the Japan Trench, not really too concerned with that, even though we see some five-pointers. Uh, in this area right here, specifically the southern end of the Kuro Cam Chatka Trench, seen a number of eight-pointers out here as well within a short time period. Uh, now... Of course, this area, I believe, is capable of producing earthquakes in excess of that. The last decent earthquake here was back in 1963 with an 8.5. Um, so there's been a number of 8s out here, but a little bit of time has passed there since the last 8-pointer. And with this newer, deeper earthquake activity striking within that uh, subduction zone there and underneath the Sea of Osk, uh, I do think we'll see this fill in, whether it's up around that magnitude similar to an 8 or not. We'll have to watch that, though. It's been quite active. Like I said, bouncing back and forth there with uh, quite a bit of activity. Uh, and same for back over here along the Aleutian Trench. Of course, that 7.3 struck um, over here. I don't have the 7-pointers, but uh, if we're talking about 8 magnitudes, we had one back in 2021 along this segment. As uh, far as any historical earthquakes of 8.0 and above, looks like the last one was over here around the center portion of the Aleutian Trench with an 8.0 back in 18 or uh, 1986. So this other earthquake activity here that you're seeing on the map of the upper 8 range is in fact uh, a lot of older activity. That's why I'm concerned about this segment here of the Aleutian Trench. Uh, it's been squeezed. You know, it's in between that 7.3 that struck... Uh, there in the Sandpoint, Alaska area recently, and also the 8.8 .8 that struck there along the Kuro Kamchatka recently as well, right there in the middle point boundary where all the stress and strain will accumulate. Uh, if you can picture here in your mind, well, I can show you here on the map. When we get adjustment along there, along the plate boundaries, this whole Pacific plate moves off to the west northwest here. So uh, this spot right here is fairly well primed, I think. Uh, and more recently for some larger earthquake activity and the amount of time that has passed around this area uh, since, uh, well, well, nothing. I mean, there's really nothing in here in terms of 8.0 or above. And the ones that are listed, uh, it's a lot of older activity, 1965, 1906. So watch that uh, region of the Aleutian Trench here closely. Uh, Pacific Northwest, nothing major going on. A couple smaller earthquakes out there. Um, we checked the Mount Rainier and the uh, Saint, uh, Mount St. Helens seismograph station earlier, earlier. There's not a whole lot going on. Still some earthquake activity. Uh, let's check out the Cascadia Trimmer map here real quick. See what we got. 133 epicenters of Trimmer down there across Northern California. Now, throughout the day, I have been seeing a couple earthquakes showing up on the Petrolia station here. We've seen one earlier. Um, I think while I was doing the update. 
Uh, so I'm sure there's earthquake activity stirring up out here. But uh, as you can see, really nothing being reported out here across this area. I, I, and I don't know why. That, obviously, we've seen it show up, but failed to get reported. Nothing big going on there, but we do have to watch it. Cascadia trimmer on the elevated side there across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Some earthquake activity north here around the uh, Lake Tahoe area. Got a couple earthquakes this evening. All very small microquakes, but hey, they're showing up. Uh, Bay Area pretty quiet up there. One earthquake it looks like on the San Andreas Fault uh, earlier this afternoon, a little 1.9. Southern California, though, pretty quiet. Nothing above 2.5. Which is kind of uh, a little unusually quiet here. And this will change, obviously, as the pressure uh, differences uh, transfer to certain segments of the plates out here. You, you know, sometimes other areas are more strained than others when it comes to uh, the current pressurization of the plates. Uh, Nevada, though, seen some earthquake activity out here in the three range early this morning. Nothing new to report there for now. A couple earthquakes out through Utah and uh, still getting some movement out there around the Hebgen Lake area. That's west of Yellowstone. A uh, little decent swarm. Nothing big happening for now. Earthquakes in the oil field still rocking and rolling. Nothing new to report there across the eastern portion of the country. <coughs> Excuse me, that just came out of nowhere. It doesn't happen too often, but when it does, it uh, comes in with a bang. A couple twos out there in threes around the Puerto Rico area. Nothing uh, major going on. Just some you know, a mixed bag of deeper and some shallow adjustment going on there across those trough zones. Uh, let's see if there's anything else major going on. Like I said, a lot of newer activity up here since the update this afternoon around the uh, Curl Cam Chatka. Quite a few fives. I mean, it comes and goes, and I, good possibility we may see some larger activity yet along the Curl Cam Chatka. Um, you know, aside from that 8.8 .8 we've seen earlier uh, back in July. Alaska area, a couple newer quakes up here as well. Really nothing major going on, but you know highly noticeable where all the activity is stirring up and of course that's over there along the northwestern edge of the pacific plate which we'll continue to watch some threes down there across new zealand but really nothing major going on some newer activity here across the Peru chile trench looks like a 3.7 and a, another earthquake there uh well two 3.7s it looks like across the area of the uh, chile region the atlantic ocean pretty quiet Mediterranean region, still some aftershock activity there around Turkey, but aside from that, looks like general uh, general normal movement out there. A uh, quick glance at the space weather activity, looking at uh, some flaring threats out here. I just noticed when I reset my computer here, uh, was it yesterday or the day before, my flare threat level reset back to a low level. I, I don't know why, but this is a more appropriate level here, about 20% chance for an X flare, M flare 75% chance which I've changed here now to match the uh, current conditions. Uh, proton event is dying down, still 20% chance there. It does look like we're still getting a little bit of protons affecting uh, the polar regions there. Let's take a look here at the uh, sunspots, see what we got. There's some massive ones. I mean, this area down here is huge. Uh, hard to say. This one's degrading. Look at that, starting to just fade away. Same with this one. Same with this area. Right now, main area of sunspot concern is going to be down here. Uh, maybe up here. We'll have to check that tomorrow, see what it looks like once it's in more of an earth directed view. But uh, definitely down here. I still think we got some X flare potential. It's been relatively quiet, neutral, I guess is the word. But man, it looks like it wants to pop off something big here. So we will watch that area closely. It is directly facing the Earth right now. So if anything were to blast off, oh man, it would be certainly geo-effective. Look at that massive, easy, easy viewing spot there. If you have a zoom cam, of course, you have you have to have your solar lens on. Otherwise, you burn up the sensor in any camera. Uh, you never want to point the camera at the sun. But uh, yeah, with a nice solar lens there, it would look uh, easily visible on the uh, solar disk. Look how huge that region is. So we'll continue to watch that uh, for some stronger flaring. No major roars there in the forecast for now. As um, far as anything else goes out here, got uh, just some general thunderstorm activity. It looks like monsoonal moisture stirring back up. 
Uh, really not a whole lot of change here for California. In fact, we're going to be uh, we, we are going to be cooking out here. Um, literally. Uh, let's see. Let's go bit of thermodynamics. Uh, West Coast going to be cooking out here across the east. Nice and cool. A little taste of fall. But high pressure is going to park right over the Pacific Northwest, bring a heat wave up there. And, of course, that brings in heat down here to Southern California as well. And it looks like we're going to be well above uh, 100, 105 or so uh, for the weekend and this coming week. I'm hoping for some cooler weather. Man. Uh, but right now, I don't see it out here for the West Coast. we got that typical pattern where the jet stream you get ridging along the west coast it drops down through canada and brings a cooler air across the areas east of the rockies i hope this switches up here because uh man i'm just i'm ready for some cool weather i i'm not a heat fan i'm done with the heat forever for the rest of my life i gotta move somewhere where there's a much cooler temperatures than 105 every day every summer all right, uh, let's see. I think that's about it, folks. Seismograph stations out there all online. They're pretty quiet, though, right now. We'll just kind of keep an eye on things here. See how it plays out. Enjoy your Friday night. Please stay safe out there. A lot of crazy stuff going on. We will catch you guys out here for the Saturday morning update. And we'll be on time tomorrow. I had a little incident this, uh, earlier today that offset my normal uh, time for the morning update. It was <laughs> like late afternoon update. Um, but tomorrow, uh, we've got a different day here, so we'll uh, definitely be out here in the morning for the Saturday morning update. Have yourself a good one. August is almost over. Uh, about time to start those burr months. be nice if we could uh, walk outside and say burr out here in the West Coast, but yeah, September coming up here in a couple days, so hopefully fall comes in rather quickly. We'll see you guys out here in the morning. Stay safe, everyone.